Good morning or good evening, since this is a virtual conference, we're reaching people all over the world. Welcome to the 63rd Emerging Growth Conference and day one of our two-day Super Virtual Investor Conference. I'm Anna Berry. So just a few notes for those attending. Today, we're running until about 4.15 Eastern time. Now, when we switch to the next company, you'll see a black screen for a moment. Don't go anywhere. That's just us moving over to the next presenter. But if you do experience downtime, refresh your browser. It usually works once you refresh the browser. Plus, our platform does work best on Google Chrome. So if you're watching from an Apple device, you have to hit the play button to start the session. Now, all of our conferences are uploaded to our Emerging Growth Conference YouTube channel. Subscribe there, youtube.com slash Emerging Growth Conference. Now, today, during each company's presentation, you can submit questions through the webcast module, and we will attempt to address as many of these as possible at the end of their presentation. Let's begin. I'd like to welcome back Agba Group Holdings Limited, established in 1993. Agba Group Holding Limited trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol AGBA and is a leading Hong Kong-based financial service company serving over 400,000 customers. It's organized into four divisions, platform, distribution, healthcare, and fintech. The group recently announced updates on a change of board members and structural change in the company. Today, we are so happy to have Agba's group CEO. Welcome back, Wing Fei, nice to see you again. Thank you, Anna, good to see you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you for your time. So should I just take it out, just move forward, Anna? Yes, the floor is yours. Call me back Great, when you're thank you. questions. Well, if you don't, if everyone don't mind, um, I'm going to start with a presentation that will last about 15, 18 minutes maximum, and I open up the floor for any questions that you have. As Anna talked about, we are the leading financial supermarket in Hong Kong and southern part of China. Or in other words, if you like, we are... I mean, if we put it more simply, we're the single largest IRA. Using a term that is more frequently used in the United States, IRA, we sell life insurance, assets management product, international property, anything, everything that is about financial well-being of our customer, we take care of them. As Anna mentions, we have been around for 30 years. We took over control of the company in year 2017-18. And we have invested over a quarter of billion dollars in upgrading everything that we had before, including technology, including infrastructure, and more importantly, upgrading the training of everyone we have. We have give or take about 2,500, 3,000 people across the group, okay? And as Anna mentions, we are essentially a financial service group with a healthcare business bulk onto it. We organize ourselves in four vertical. Number one is a people-to-people -people sales and distribution network. Again, we are by far away the leading IRA business in the regions. There's no one else, okay? And we're not only the largest, as I will explain to you later on, we're the most productive. And the second vertical, the second business we have is a platform business. Think of that as a supermarket, as a platform. That's honestly is the only pure pay platform business for financial services product in this region. We pitch in between the product manufacturer and the customer on the right hand side. We are the link in between. We make the transaction happen. We make the financial advisory process smooth and compete. And the third vertical we have is our fintech business. And we are blessed that we have been very lucky in our investment in fintech businesses around the world, especially in the US and the UK. Currently, we are still the second largest shareholder of one of the most successful digital bank in the UK called Tandem Bank. It's a profitable uh, uh, digital bank. We are, we are lucky we still have it. We used to be a, a controlling shareholder of a very successful you, a unicorn in the UK called Nutmet. They were the one of the early generations of mobile advisory. And the fourth business is a new business we have. We start getting into our business about two years ago. It's our healthcare business. We don't take healthcare risks. 
This is a pure, simple back office of HMO, the customer service of HMO. We don't take any financial risk. In fact, none of our business take any balance sheet risk at this moment. We are a pure pay platform. We are pure pay distributions company. Again, as I mentioned earlier on, and um, we got the company in 2000, late 2017 to 2018. We spent a quarter billion taking where it was a traditional old fashioned book and dealer business. We bulk into a lot of training, a lot of technology, a lot of upgrading our infrastructure to really take it to where we are at this moment is the leading brand in our business. And as many of you know, we in Hong Kong, we have gone through a four years, if you're counting this year as well, five years of uh, a hardship, if you like. Okay. In year 2019, we have a whole year of social unrest. We have three years of hardcore uh, COVID lockdown. And so far this year, the economic recovery post COVID uh, has been rather choppy, has been um, very much lagging in terms of expectations. Even that, even the last four years, hardship we've gone through, we make anywhere between $70 million revenue to $100 million revenue. And if you like, there are four or five key investment highlights of what we are and who we are and, and, and what we represent. Number one, hopefully you already get it. Our product and our service offering is very unique. We have two group of customers. One is we directly deliver our product to the end customers. The end customer in this case is defined by mostly the middle class in Hong Kong, middle class in southern part of China. The second business we have is a B2B business. It's what we call the platform business that we saw before. Number two, we are very lucky. We are operating our Hong Kong in southern part of China in what we now call the Greater Bay Area of China which is the seventh largest economy in the world, as big as California. And the only difference is we have massive growth here. And number three, our business model economics is very compelling. What does that mean is we are totally scalable. All the sunk costs, all the investment, all the CapEx has already been made, as I mentioned earlier on, on this page four, and we make a lot of investment before we went public for a SPAC, uh, November last year. And now our business is entirely scalable. We don't need that much capital expenditure anymore. We might need some investment here and there for continue upgrading and continue R&D, but the bulk of the investment already been made. And our business at this moment, our infrastructure and technology is entirely scalable. And number four, uh, I mentioned earlier on our fintech business as well as our healthcare business. We're just beginning to, to drive synergy with those business. We have a long way to go. And number five, and by far the most important, we have a fantastic team. I'm very blessed. I find care for that. We have a fantastic management team across the company. And a lot of people ask, how do we benchmark ourselves? Um, that's probably because of my background being a management consultant. We always have self-doubt. We always like to see how we benchmark operations, how we benchmark our business strategy, how we benchmark our business model against competitor or some of the best of class company around the world. For that, we work with the leading management consultant firm on a regular basis, especially McKinsey. And um, there's a number of companies that we benchmark. We have shared those experience, those analysts to a great extent on our website uh, if you go to www.agba.com slash IR, you will see a very comprehensive review of a comparable company. Not only compare the operations, we also look at the valuation as well. So that's what we do. And in, 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 in US, there's a company called uh, LPL Financial in Boston. I think that, that's trading about $20 billion. That look, we look a lot like them. Okay, then a few other company and we can see around the world. There are, in, in the Asia perspective, our competitors are all very small, which is why we go outside of the regions looking for benchmark. Unfortunately, uh, as you can see here, uh, our, our valuations, our share price has been hampered uh, greatly since our back November last year. We traded about 50% discount. 
uh, to revenue. We trade at 0.5 times of our revenue. Comparable company around the world, I'm not even counting those in Asia, trade about five times, about five times uh, more viable than where we are. And please don't ask me why that is the case. <laughs> I can go on forever why that is the case, and we're looking for solutions. And some of you may have seen a announcement that we make uh, on Tuesday, Monday, as well as today, in relation to some of the trading, irregular trading of our shares. We are definitely working very hard to try to nail down why on earth our valuation is so low. Let me just give you about five minutes rundown of our product and offering. The picture on the right hand side is our headquarter. Okay. And um, we occupy this building, entirely of this building, as well as uh, a few floors, uh, about five minutes walk from, from, from this office. We are uh, situated very much in the center of the center of financial and commercial district in Hong Kong, in Wan Chai. And, and you're always welcome to come visit. Number one, we talk about our distributions. We have most power of our distribution capability. For this, we have almost 2,000 people, okay, doing door-to-door, face-to-face sales every day. Not only we are the largest of, of the IRA in the regions, the all the other payer, the number two, number three payer, and most they have about 200, 300 people, okay? We are the, the only one that is in scale and, uh, as well as in scope. And more importantly, uh, on the right-hand side, is so our people, not only we, well, only we have a lot of people in doing sales and services, we are the, by far away the most productive. And, and this page shows you live insurance, which is what our, our number one product. And the second largest product we have is our assets management advisory and distributions. Again, for this, we have the fourth largest sales team, okay? Behind, I think, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley. And the chart on the left-hand side didn't come from us, came from uh, the regulator through uh, Financial Times published, uh, the financial newspaper, Financial Times newspaper. And again, on the right-hand side, we offer more product in asset management product uh, area than anyone else in the market. And number three is our platform business. I touched on earlier on, we, this, hopefully this, this nice video really show you what we do. We go in between. We don't manufacture product ourselves yet, okay? And we, we likely will never do, okay? If we do, we partner with someone else, okay, who are much better at it, our strength, it's in sales and distribution. Our strength is financial advisory. So we take the product manufacturer on the left-hand side of this page. And with our technology, with our infrastructure, with our people, we distribute those products to financial advisors, to salespeople, digital retail company, banks, HMO, and even doctors and clinics around Hong Kong, southern part of China. So we are a pure paid platform. As you can see, all the provider, all the product, we offer over 2,000 products in our platform. How we do that? Technology. We cannot do that without state-of-the-art technology. Again, as I told you on page four, we spent a quarter billion US dollars in building that since 19, year 2017, year 2018, and that is the core of our offer, and we're gonna to continue to upgrade that. And that leads us to where we are. We have a very scalable business. Okay, you're gonna hear us all the time. Our business is an entirely scalable, okay? The more revenue we make, the more money we make. We, are, we have marginal cost advantage, which is why in more way than one, we're the only game in town. There are three things that continue to drive our top nine. Top nine will drive our profitability, okay? Number one, the size of our broker dealer network, okay? We turn it up and down over time, depending on economic environment. We are a little on the low side at this moment because an economic environment so far this year has been pretty crappy, all right? But we can easily turn it up as we go forward, as we see the development of economic recovery coming from China especially. Number two, the Greater Bay Area growth. As Hong Kong and Southern part of China continue to integrate, we see continued opportunity. We have no problem seeing 15, 25% growth 
of new customer in our customer base, just driving from Greater Bay Area. And number three, we are going to continue to develop alternative distribution channel, alternative uh, uh, product. We're going to continue to broaden our, our product as well as the franchises. And if I may, I just touch on a little bit on Greater Bay Area. A lot of people know about it. It's the, you know, again, the southern part of China. It's what we call two hours or three hours living circle. Um, with the high-speed railway, with Hong Kong as a central point, you can pretty much cover um, all the 60 million people or 90 million people within an hour and a half or less uh, high-speed railway coverage, okay? It's about 13% of China economy, two trillion dollars GDP, and is, is, is the by far away the most advanced. That's where most of the test stuff in China come out of. As you may know, and we are one of the first ones who sang alarm bell, um, the China economic recovery post-COVID has been behind schedule or behind people expectations. We start realizing that uh, in March and especially in April, and we got confirmed ourselves that when we look at the golden week uh, business activity in early May, we realized the economic recovery is not going to come in the way that most people have expected. And, and which is why in second quarter, we spend a lot of time tuning down our capacity and we cut down our costs and we are much better shaped than where, where we ever been. And lo and behold, the economic recovery uh, was especially bad in, in second quarter and third quarter, which you also saw there were uh, debations uh, in, in, in June and July. But we, we do see night at the end of the tunnel. I do think we're bumping around at the bottom. And we believe um, um, August was the, was the worst month, okay, was the bottom of the cycle. September was pretty good. We have good expectations. October on will be pretty strong economic recovery. We do expect some modest economic stimulus coming in from Beijing to stimulus economy overall, coming anytime now, especially moving towards China's new year. So we remain hopeful, and you're gonna see us gradually increasing our capacity, increasing the number of our broker dealer, our RLA, starting around October and October, November time, in gearing up for what we can see of the economic recovery. Again, I, just, I talked about that earlier on. We're still hopeful about a Q4 economic recovery. Q3 was much, much better than most people expected. The stock market have not reflected that, okay, for a number of reasons. Okay, I can talk about political, uh, geopolitical situations for, for hours and ends, but knowing what I know at this moment, I have many reasons to be hopeful uh, for uh, Q4 this year. So that's where we stand. You're gonna see us ramping up our infrastructure, ramping our capacity uh, in Q4. And we touch on FinTech because this is important part of our business. Not only we, we invest in this business, the most important part of this process is learning, okay? We are not smart enough to invent a lot of this stuff ourselves. So we invest in people like Tandem, we invest in Oscar in US and Nutman in UK. One of the most important things of this journey was for us to learn what they have, okay? And what they call the secret sauce, okay? And in the, in the form of Nutman, Oscar and Tandem, we certainly learn a lot of secret sauce that we have implemented, we have imported back into Hong Kong, into China for our own benefit. And we're very proud of that. And again, you know, our TED with our learning from, from US, from the UK, is one of the reasons why our business is very sticky. And this is another page that is very important. When we talk about big data, not only we have big data of our customer. CRM, of course we have, everyone has CRM. More importantly, we're the only company in the regions that have thousands and thousands, 10 years of product data that can go forward and backward comparisons, life insurance and access management in a, in a system, what we call an iCompare. Okay, we're very proud of that. 
we use a lot of AI, a lot of uh, 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 data analytics in that, and there's a lot more powerful things that we continue to work, develop and introduce to the market. And another thing that's very important for us is we continue to expand our product offering. We are very lucky we build our system very universal. So recently, we introduced a whole bunch of public and casualty insurance product. It didn't take much for us to get this up and going. Okay, product introductions, product expansion, diversifications is very important in our business. We're lucky our system can do that. Again, I won't bore you with it. All this is driving what we call stickiness to the platform. Okay, we got the tech, we got the infrastructure, we got the product, we got big data analytics. You fold that into the mix with the largest sales team, people team, you got very sticky platform business. That is what we are. Of healthcare business, we bought it two years ago. We bought it because um, it brings a lot of customers. There's a lot of synergy between the healthcare business and in Hong Kong, as well as our business in financial services business, because a lot of the mainland Chinese kind do like to come to Hong Kong and have you know, do healthcare and one one take care of that as well. Again, as I said, we just barely in our in our process in integrating the two businesses. We have a long way to go, which emerging between one platform as well as uh, our, our HGBA health. And recently, uh, we team up with my very old friend, Alice Merchant Capital in the form of Bob Diamond, the former CEO of uh, Backus Bank, as well as David Seamus, his partner. A lot of people ask why we do that. That is a very important strategic partnership for us because we want to take our revenue growth to the next stage. There's a lot of synergy. Most people don't really understand what Alice Merchant Capital has. I do, because we want the early investors with them. Our strength in HGBA are in three areas. Number one, sales and distributions as I have bored you in the last 10 minutes. That's what we do. Number two, advisory to our kind. And number three, our strength, we have a very large captive as well as new clientele. What Alice Merchant Capital have is they are an assets management company. They manufacture a product, especially private equity hedge fund. Those are high margin business that have a very large demand in Asia, especially our Hong Kong, our Singapore. They, were, they have a massive global network from the decades long of working on Wall Street, working in the city of London. And number three, their portfolio contains some very impressive financial service company. I won't dive into detail because of conventionality issues, but a number of portfolio company will be teaming up with us in launching product in the regions. A lot of people got confused. Are we expanding our Asia? We are not, okay? We are very much focused on our geographical focus, Hong Kong, China, and soon Singapore and Indonesia. That is our core base. We have competitive advantage. We are Chinese. We serve Chinese speaking world. Hopefully what we're gonna drive in synergy, gonna drive us three things is number one, revenue growth. Number two, franchise and product expansions. And number three, we're going to continue to raise selectively growth capital. I won't dive into a quick deal because we run out of time. And what else will help us is help us build the left hand side of the business. Okay. One of the first products that us, Russian Capital, and AGBA is going to do and um, will be launching a US bank recapitalization fund. Why is that? Because uh, we can charge a lot of fee. Number one, number two, there's a large, large demand in Hong Kong and in Singapore for investing in high quality US financial assets. We have identified that since January, we've been working on this for a while. We're gonna be launching this fund for at least $500 million AUM. We're very excited about it. In due course, we're going to hopefully be able to announce more partnership along the way. Another business that we're gonna start building together now is we're gonna build a high net wealth advisory and private banking business with Alex. I will provide more detail later on again, I run out of time. So what are we looking for? I'd like to see if that's more tangible. 
So number one, revenue growth talk about, I expect immediately about 50 to 80 million a revenue going forward, incremental of what we have. And number two, accelerated our upgrading in our franchise, in our product offering. We do not have an expertise. These guys can help us expand. And number three, we're going to continue to use capital wisely to increase our capacity for revenue growth. You're going to hear more from that uh, soon. We have a very successful first half. Revenue is way behind what we expected because economic growth is not there, but we've done a lot of things. This place show you our, our revenue is doing well, but our share price continue to go down. Don't ask me why. We're very annoyed by that. We're doing everything possible to correct this. But let's look at what we have done. Number one, we have an important partnership with HSBC Life. We're the only one who are allowed to sell HSBC Life product outside the HSBC group. We're very proud that that product is doing extremely well in our sales. Two, we got included in MCIS Global Microcap Index. Okay, we're very proud of that. We're very happy. And we're going to co we continue our marketing. We won a lot of industry war. Okay, and our social media strategy is picking up speed. We got a lot of following in our social media. We can talk about that later on. And we produce a lot of content on an ongoing basis because we want to keep an active dialogue with all the investors around the world. And in terms of chart work on and good operation structure, let me just uh, dive into a little bit before I open the floor for Q&A. We have great team. I won't dive into that now. We've got Bob here uh, as our chair, Bob Diamond on our chair now. And back by my old time friend, uh, Richard Tai, one of the richest men in the world now and one of the most rapid and respected investors in the world scene. And this year, we only focus, continue to focus on our executions. So that's it. I open the floor for questions. Great job. Okay, we have a few minutes for questions. Um, let's start with this. So uh, you recently announced your expansion plans into new markets. So shed some light on the target regions and your strategy behind this expansion. Our strategy is behind this, the, 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 the expansion very simple, for the customers. We are not, we are not a global company. We only cover Chinese speaking market. Okay, one of the most important market we, we, we should be in, we haven't been in, is in Singapore, okay? Singapore and Indonesia. That is a huge market for, uh, for our Chinese speaking uh, world. A lot of our customers in China are moving to Singapore, expanding to Indonesia. We want to follow them because if we don't follow this customer, someone else will serve them, okay? Selectively, we like to be in North America, especially in Canada, because uh, by any estimate you have, there's about a million very high value customers in North America, especially in Canada, that we're not serving. Many of our customers now do the business, do the job, stay at the work and career in the regions in Hong Kong and Singapore, while the family are being educated in, in, in Canada or in the United States. We like to follow them because by history, we know those are the much better customers and we want to be the first call they make. We don't want someone else uh, uh, provide a service for them. So that's what we do. We have no intention of just pounding the fact, okay, for just being, for the sake of being overseas. Our business is all about revenue growth. Thank you for that. And following up with your recent news on the appointment of Bob Diamond, your new chairman, speak about uh, the addition of Bob Diamond and what that means for the company. Oh, that's very important. You know, one, number one, uh, I'm very glad we got the endorsement of Bob. Bob is a longtime friend, okay, but he is a legend in the industry, in the financial industry around the world. And it brings a, a very large global network into the mix of what we do. Again, we're very parochial, we're very focused on what we do in Hong Kong and soon Singapore and Indonesia. But again, as I mentioned about our partnership with Alice, there's a lot of products that our clients want to buy, but no one else is providing. For example, as I mentioned, we are going to uh, uh, jointly launch a fund that invests in US banking stock because the US banking stock have been taking a hit. And we, we have no problem seeing we're going to raise $500 million for that out of Hong Kong, 
uh, China, Taiwan, and, and Singapore and Indonesia. So we're very excited about it. There's a lot more we're going to do, be able to do with Bob on, in, in coming months and coming years. Can you also talk about uh, the Atlas as a strategic advisor? What are your expected outcomes that you aim to achieve through this collaboration with Atlas? Yeah, as I mentioned in one of the page I, 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 I talk about, um, there are three things that they're really good. Number one, and they manufacture a lot of products. One of the parts of that they have been very humble about is they have a very successful U.S. credit fund, very successful. They haven't sold that to retail outside. We're going to help them do that. It's a very profitable business. That generates a lot of fee for us. We're going to do that. So product manufacturing allows us to sell a lot more product, a lot, a much higher margin product into our client base. That's number one. Number two is access to global partner global company, okay? That we, we don't know what we don't know. Bob Diamond, David Seamus, they do. We need the advice what to do outside Asia. We are expert in Asia, but outside here, outside Asia, we are not. We need help to do that. As I mentioned earlier on, we have a lot of kind that is underserved outside Asia, and we want to make sure we tap them. And number three, again, being a Chinese company, a Hong Kong company listed on NASDAQ, and we are a new kid on the block. We, we, we like American friends to help us. Okay, that's where the kicks in. And which I also, exp you know, as I explained my dismay, our, our, our share is trading at ridiculous valuations. And I, hopefully I expect uh, Alex, uh, the team and us will be able to help us work to bridge the gap of valuations as well. Perfect. Great presentation. Thank you so much for your time. We have so many questions for you, but we're going to send them to you so you and your team can answer on your own time. And we definitely we look will. forward to you coming back. We will start to answer those questions on our website. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Wing Fei. We'll see you again soon. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Okay, everyone. Stay with us. We'll be right back.